Bill Bartner grew up in the tiny community of Longview, eight miles south of Starkville. There his granddaddy had Butner General Store, and his daddy was a jack-of-all-trades, a deacon in the Baptist church. Bill was one of six children, five boys and a sister. The Butners weren't wealthy by any means, but the Butner family was a perfect example of how you don't need money to buy love and happiness. This was a family that played together and prayed together. Well, uh, growing up in Longview, uh, we, we didn't have a lot, you know. Uh, my dad um, had changed several jobs. He, he'd run a sawmill, he'd run a store, worked with a coke company, and then worked at Mississippi State. So uh, we had enough to get by. Um, I used to uh, think we really liked navy beans, and uh, then I realized that they go a long way. You mix navy beans and ketchup and bread, you know, as a, a good meal. Bill gained an early interest in sports following the nearby Mississippi State Bulldogs. You know, I used to go to, to state and sell peanuts and Cokes in the in this, uh, stadium and, and gave me an opportunity to watch the Bulldogs play. And some of my heroes came through, like Johnny Baker, I, which was one of my idols. You know, I thought, man, if I could ever wear that Bulldog uniform, it would be awesome. Bill played mostly backyard and sandlot ball until the ninth grade when the family moved to Starkville and he was immediately positioned at quarterback. The Butner kid had an arm. He was smart. He never played any other position. Of course, the little 10 was a great league. And uh, when I was a freshman, I dressed out with a varsity, uh, which had some pretty good athletes on it. Scholarship offers didn't exactly pour in. Chattanooga offered. State wanted Butner to walk on. And then a man named Bull Sullivan came into Butner's life, as big as John Wayne and as gruff as Rooster Clogburn. Uh, Don Edwards, who was an All-American at Scuba, uh, came with Coach Sullivan to recruit me uh, out of high school. And so uh, Don, it, you know, was playing there at Mississippi State, and that's the year they won the Liberty Bowl. Uh, I think Don was quarterbacking at that time. And uh, so it was through Don that I really connected <coughs> with uh, Coach Sullivan and made a decision to go there. Did you know what you were getting yourself into? I had no idea. Um, after playing for Jack Nix, who never used a vulgar word. Bull Sullivan had been a Marine hero, was destined for the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame. Didn't believe in face masks. His teams wore leather helmets. They sometimes scrimmaged at halftime. But Sullivan was a football mastermind, far ahead of his time, in the passing game. He believed in throwing the football, and Bill Buckner became the best thrower Bull Sullivan ever had. Uh, but uh, he was a brilliant person. And, uh, you know, he had a degree in anthropology, was working on his doctorate in that. And um, uh, I think the psychology of the game, he knew how to bring you to a point uh, to play at your peak. And uh, I think that's what he did. You know, um, I, I saw some of the things that happened out there. I still remember him grabbing one ball player and, that made a mistake. He was about 6'6 and weighed about 230 pounds. But Coach Sullivan picked him up and shook him real good and said, it, uh, I've killed more men than you can stack on this football field, and one more won't make a difference. Butner threw 47 touchdown passes over two seasons. This was back when some teams didn't throw that many passes, period. Sullivan's high-scoring undefeated team appeared headed to a junior Rose Bowl, Butner's sophomore season, until he suffered a badly broken jaw in the seventh game. His junior college career over, he fielded senior college scholarships from all over, including Tennessee. But his love for Mississippi State went out, and he signed with the Bulldogs. Back then, the Bulldogs were strictly a running team. The highlight of Butner's one year there was throwing the first two touchdown passes in the history of the Houston Astro Dome. But mostly, Butner walked the sidelines while State ran the ball. Still, he considered his one year at State a blessing because that's where he was first introduced 
to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes by an Alabama quarterback named Steve Sloan, who would later be his Atlanta Falcon teammate. Pro scouts insisted Buckner might have an NFL future, but he needed to be in a passing offense. With his coach's blessing, Bill decided to transfer. He had offers from Wake Forest, Richmond, Mississippi College, and Delta State. Horace McCool at Delta State promised to throw the ball, and he kept that promise. With Hall of Famer Jack Gregory as one of his favorite targets, Butner threw 16 more touchdown passes and earned a pro contract with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, when it came down, um, uh, they made the decision to send me to Huntsville. Uh, Marv Matusak had played with the Colts, was the head football coach. And so I played uh, the first year there. We won uh, the our division and played for the overall championship. It was in Huntsville that Butner began working part-time as a high school coach. He found he loved it. From Huntsville, he moved to Kosciuszko and then to Starkville Academy. He also coached at East Mississippi Community College and then at Hines. Butner's life reached a crossroads in 1987 when he was offered the leadership of the Mississippi Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a ministry he had been involved with since his days at Mississippi State, where he'd helped start state's first FCA tournament. Decide if I was going to leave coaching or, or uh, go into this ministry. And I called Coach Ferris, talked with him about it. And uh, he said, I think, you know, it's something you'll really enjoy. So I've been with it now. This is my 26th year. Under Butner's guidance, the Mississippi FCA has flourished. He had no staff to begin with. He now has a statewide staff of 21 full-time workers, six part-time, and four volunteers. For fewer than 100 schools in 1987, the FCA is now on 390 campuses. Butner has seen more lives changed than he can count, and his own faith and a strong supporting family have helped him through an often rough three-year battle with leukemia. And uh, my facing that and um, trusting God that he's got everything under control and really appreciating every day that I've got to live, every moment, that it's a blessing from him. Ask about his greatest thrill in Mississippi sports. Butner talked not about all the touchdown passes or all the coaching victories. When I was asked to speak at Coach McCool's funeral, uh, when he passed away, the, the family called and asked, would I represent the players and come and speak at that? And uh, to be able to go there and, and uh, reminisce with the folks that were there that came to celebrate his life. You know, my whole life with athletics, God has played such a role in it uh, To And I've made a lot of mistakes, but to know of his grace and his mercy and then to be able to, to live that out in front of coaches and to be asked to be a part of that service and uh, share this man's changed life through Christ. I mean, that's what I'm all about now with FCA is trying to get coaches to realize the platform God's given them and uh, to use it because life is short. It's like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. And I'm so privileged to receive this tremendous honor to be inducted in the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, there are so many people that have influenced my life in so many different ways, and uh, I am so grateful. Uh, I start off just thinking about some of the coaches that I've had the privilege of uh, playing for, and then there's my family, that uh, my parents that were strong Christians that uh, raised me with, uh, there were five boys and one girl in a strong Christian home. And then having the privilege of going to Starkville High School and playing for a uh, legendary coach, Jack Nix, that was sports, uh, four sports letterman at Mississippi State. Uh, and then the privilege of going to East Mississippi Community College and playing for uh, Cyclone Bull Sullivan. Uh, what an experience that was. And then uh, moving on to Mississippi State with Paul Davis, having met Steve Sloan and Paul Crane from Alabama, 
and Coach Boo Ferris that helped us start FCA at Mississippi State in 1965. And then moving on to Coach McCool at Delta State, uh, another person that influenced my life uh, tremendously as I accept this honor uh, and this privilege of, of being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's because of a lot of people that have influenced my life. I pray that uh, my being inducted into this Hall of Fame uh, would also be a reflection on what Christ has meant to my life uh, from a young age uh, to the present time now. Uh, God has uh, protected, He has divinely led me. I thank all the athletes, all the coaches, and all of those uh, that have supported me over the years. Thank you and God bless.